Thank you for listening to the Content Magazine Podcast, Conversations with Silicon Valley's Creatives. I'm Daniel Garcia, your host and the cultivator of Content Magazine, published by SV Creates. Okay, first we have to do a clap to do that. Are we rolling? Okay. One, two, three. Ooh, that was good. I like that. Okay. Hello, welcome to the Content Magazine podcast and video, and I'm here today with Carmen Tyra Gaines. Got your middle name in there. Yes. And uh, you're the associate director at Local Color. Correct. But you do a lot more than that. But I, I do want to get to um, how you came to Local Color. But before we do that, it's like I'm excited to sit down here with you because I've seen you around for the mm-hmm. last like, number of years. But we've never really had like a long conversation yeah. other than passing. And it's probably just because of my own social awkwardness. But um, – <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to find out about your life and everything, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to share that. I feel like a, a lot of people could probably say that sentence about me and, and run-ins with me, too. So Yeah, yeah you are. are you, would, you call, would you say that you're an introvert or a kind of shy person or what? I'm definitely, I, I, I'm both. And, uh, you know, related to my work, having, you know, volunteering behind the bar table. You talk to so many people, but you have that little safety zone of like, I'm here for a purpose and have a job. And I'm also going to enjoy what's going on. Um, Yeah. And so I, more and more, though, I just like to go out and just enjoy arts and culture to its fullest um, beyond job work i i just truly enjoy it yeah yeah that's cool well i was saying like I, when i was thinking about you i was thinking that you kind of and i don't know if you've gotten this before and i don't want to if it's rude even but you're kind of like a cheshire caddish like the <laughs> smile even that you have but then you're kind of like you know like the cheshire cat in the thing is like it, all of a sudden there and then you see the nice smile you're kind of like that like you appear that's awesome. at different <laughs> events and then you always have this very nice smile like a very you have a very I was even thinking too because I saw a picture of you and doing my extensive research on your entire life, um, <laughs> and then like you know like a lot of people have like smiles, and it's kind of like looks you just kind of have like a very kind of like peaceful countenance and a smile. Is that how how do you? Would you describe yourself as being kind of like a content, joyful person? or Absolutely. And I think I definitely get that from my dad. I remember growing up, I felt like he would just run into tons of people. He worked at IBM for 36 years, and that's how I ended up being born here in California. And I think I just got that from him where it's like, oh, maybe someone's a stranger. Maybe they're not a stranger, but you treat them like you know them, yeah. um, especially if you're like absolutely joyful. Uh, I've definitely have uh my face gives me away for sure so like if i'm <laughs> smiling your yeah, yeah like yeah. i you caught me in a good mood and yeah, if yeah, yeah. um something is perplexing me or i'm thinking about something my face is like very like stoic yeah. and serious so it's like it's not uh, worrying your emotion doesn't just leave it's like i'm wearing my emotions on my face yeah, absolutely yeah. okay good that makes me kind of nervous because if all of a sudden i see you do like a <laughs> or something that I'd be like, oh my gosh, I said something wrong. But uh, okay, uh, well, cool. Well, thank you for being here. So now you actually were born and raised here in San Jose. Yes. Yeah. Very so fortunate. How did you get involved in the arts? Because you went to San Francisco State University and you did um, kind of like art major, art history, spatial art, and then photography too. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you kind of like? What was your entry into the arts growing up here in San Jose, and then? will work it all the way to your current position at um, Local Color. So how did you get involved in art? I think it started in high school. Uh, I went to Gunderson High School, and I was a part of Associated Student Body all four years. And so from, like, spirit days and face paint and all of that, and then junior year, I was, like, a co-dance director. So it was really fun to organize events essentially and yeah. there was one that I still have a piece of artwork from um, I went to high school with the Jimenez brothers so Nicholas Jimenez Silvino um, and their older brother Felipe and they've been artists for as long as I've known them too yeah. um, and so there I kind of curated their artwork into oh, this wow. um, you know Sadie Hawkins glow yeah. in the dark theme of a dance That's cool. That's cool. Uh, and then after high school I thought you know I'm gonna go away like go out of San Jose yeah. and that quickly changed and I was like okay well I'm gonna stay 
at, at and go to Dianza and what like changed, figure like, it what out. What was the quickly change? Just the crazy cost of going away to college? Or? Ooh, um, <coughs> I have uh, an older sister, um, and so she had gone through some traumas away, oh, and okay. that being her story, I'll leave it yeah. leave it there. Yeah. Um, but that definitely affected me very early on, and so just mentally, like I was not ready to verge into the unknown of like oh my goodness like what could happen and very fortunate to like still be friends with the people I was I was friends with in high school and so I I just felt like I'd be leaving too much without really knowing where I was going and definitely just like a lot of like fear and anxiety so I think that is also the the kind of like I've popped up and now I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I step in when I'm comfortable, and then it gets to a point of like, okay, time to like yeah, yeah, yeah. go back to my little cubby hole. And, yeah. Um. So both both still are there. Yeah. Uh. The so, after. So sorry. then you stayed around here, and you went to De Anza for a bit, right? And yes. Then that, and then you transferred. And then I transferred. Uh, the I have to give shout outs to Makla though. Um. So music in the park, like coming riding the light rail. Um. Was like such a, I don't know what is that called uh, when you get older? Rites of passage. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, getting yeah, yeah. freedoms to yeah, ride yeah. the light rail was a yeah. rites of passage yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. And when music in the park was free, so you'd come down, you'd like be able to hang out downtown late night. Is this when you were like in high school? Still, yeah, or this yeah. is like seventeen, eighteen, like getting out of the freedom. I'm you know, one of two girls, and so I feel like my parents definitely kind of like sheltered us a bit. Yeah. Like, Are you, you the know, oldest or youngest? Youngest, youngest yeah, yeah. Uh, like you know, you stay home. Yeah. Uh, but then it got to a point of like, well, I have friends and I'm gonna go out and yeah. um so I knew that there was tons of arts here in the sofa district particularly so yeah. I like printed out my little resume I've been a nanny I know how to make pizzas <laughs> <laughs> from bogeys um and went to all the galleries here to see if they had internships oh, cool. and I was fortunate enough to land an internship at uh Makla oh, okay. in their um business administration and when was that like what year ish kind of like how long ago uh must have been 2011 uh because okay. then that's what really like while i was at dianza like i knew i wanted to do art i really pictured myself like in a museum kind of like yeah. maybe out of the country even yeah um and more and more so i just kind of fell in love with like the local culture and appreciating yeah. what is like right at my fingertips yeah. really understanding what it means to be from the bay area like i remember learning about the hyphy movement at dianza in our sociology class yeah. and that totally like spent this like lens of like wow like art is like our voice and it really doesn't matter totally matter where you are yeah. that you can like project that out there and like learn about past present and and imagine a future all through art so yeah it definitely cool. just made me appreciate where where i was yeah that's cool so then i mean obviously like you are very much a go-getter or, or whatever because if you were in as what i don't even know what it's called I was <laughs> so, yeah, so she, student student, body. yeah which was like everything like i completely <laughs> avoided we're um in high school and then you like helped with the dance group you helped with yeah, right you know that's kind of and then to you know to have the gumption to like go downtown and just walk to places and say like do you have an internship that's that's pretty cool have you always been kind of like very much like oh i'm gonna i mean because i mean i you know like well, i don't know you that well yeah you don't seem like you're <laughs> would be like that kind of like a forward uh-huh. kind of thing but i mean i guess there's different styles of being i don't want to say aggressive or tenacious or what i don't mm-hmm. know right you're normally like a tenacious person is very like loud but you probably like very nice knocking on the door hi i'm wondering if you have an internship <laughs> right where i would have been like hey you got to get inter- yeah yes so but have you always been kind of like i'm gonna i'm gonna make it happen i was not born that way apparently my godfather loves to say that like people would just look at me and i would just start crying and like <laughs> cling to my mom and dad so definitely was not like that for a long time but then i think in like preschool like i definitely remember making like important friendships in preschool yeah. so I think maybe that hmm. like learning that people are good yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um like my friend from kindergarten I have like a really close friend from like fourth grade so I feel like like the people aspect is yeah. what brings it out just like that hope that like oh yeah there's like other people that you can potentially connect with um so I think that positive factor is a driver 
and then also kind of the the other side of it that like life is short mm. and um i have been tangential to like a lot of early passings mm. um and yeah. just really being steadfast in the fact that like yeah. i want to squeeze the most out yeah. of my life like for my close ancestors for my like past ancestors that didn't even have the option yeah um and so it just feels really important for me to like find joy yeah. and i genuinely just get joy out of like being that kind of flaneur in like real life, that like motif of a person kind of like walking through a scene, like I I strive, yeah, <laughs> I strive yeah. for that. That's awesome. That's cool. That's good. Um, yeah. Okay. So then you, but your art kind of journey that you did. So you had a photography major. I know you do a little photography like on the side, and I see it's different stuff that you're doing. But um, but you were kind of more were going into kind of more of the arts administrative museum curatory. Was that kind of like the kind of thing? And you're doing that now was the were you kind of thinking you do like fine art photography too or what was kind of like the different thoughts going on in a young Carmen no, you're still I, young thank you <laughs> <laughs> I just a had my group. my 30th solar return so I definitely oh, feel awesome. like older. happy solar return thank yeah. you let's <laughs> yeah, go 30 um yeah. so yeah that feels like a like I definitely am still young <laughs> yeah but yeah. I've also have like 10 decades of life yeah so it's 30 is actually good <laughs> I, like I used to say like life begins at 30 because I think like you know, like, when, of course, before you became 20, you're just, like, kind of grown up. But when you get your 20s, like, you kind of feel like, oh, like, I'm an adult, but you still don't know enough about the world. Then 30 is kind of like, oh, I have enough history of myself and the world that you can kind of, like, make decisions and stuff. So congratulations. That's a good place to be in. I'm excited for Thank the next you. 30 years of what's going to happen. But, okay, but we're talking about um, – how did I get here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the arts administrative part of it versus fine art photography or something like that. I think at a pretty early on, I I accepted that I didn't want to do art for like make that be the way that I survive in this capitalist world <laughs> yeah. um, because I love it so much. I really do. I hmm. got kind of upset with art, <laughs> learning about art photography in particular yeah. uh learning about how it interacted like with like the early wars like the civil war yeah. um and, like war yeah. in like vietnam yeah. and like what role it played yeah. and how it kind of became a tool yeah. of you know some not good things yeah. and it was kind of got abused um yeah. in the art for in in what its power is and yeah. then it took me a while to get back to that and just find the joy and like just sitting in a moment and like looking at the light and looking yeah. at shadows and um just like that extra layer that's yeah. like always going on around us like i think yeah. that is truly beautiful to me like golden hour you know yeah. a nice overcast day with diffused light so yeah. i think i'm, I'm con i do have that mindset of a yeah. photographer uh, but I also just really need to be in that mental zone yeah. to dive into art. And I use it as catharsis and just like as a way to like purge a feeling or capture yeah. a moment. Um, so I, I learned early that commercially wasn't the thing that I was going after. Yeah. Um, portraiture, I think, is like an extremely intimate artwork yeah. and that... <laughs> um, less uh exuberant side of myself <laughs> does not really allow me to like be like hey like really cool person off the street yeah. can i just like take your picture or to be that photographer that captures these really beautiful moments where someone's not even aware oh, because yeah. i'm like oh, okay well i'm like the street capture yes yeah. like i admire that form of photography yeah. but it's not um it's not something my fingers uh are, are comfortable <laughs> with yeah. yes yeah um, and then also having a dark room. So my studio practice and what I learned okay, was cool. in film photography. Yes. And um, I feel like that tangible part of photography is what was like most fun being yeah. in the dark room, very like sensory oriented. Yeah. You totally zone out because yeah. you're like in this darkened room. Yeah. Um, and so not having access to that after school. Um, you know, got a scanner, but still it just didn't spark that same yeah. joy for me. Yeah. Uh, so I think the other side of photography, so it's you, the photographer behind the lens using this tool, but then the other side is like this entire world that you're either creating or interacting with. And yeah. so leaning into that mm -hmm. and from my experience at Makla, um, that's how I ended up going the kind of administrative uh, programmatic route. So I yeah. uh, found an internship 
uh, after two years at San Francisco State because I transferred from Danza. I was like, I don't want to leave San Francisco. I was still living in San Jose the whole time doing oh, the okay. Caltrain commute. Yeah, yeah. Um, but didn't want to leave the community necessarily because there is – uh, there's just so much opportunity in the arts in the North Bay. Um, so I was at Southern Exposure for, uh, I think, like three years or okay. so. Yeah. Started there as an unpaid intern. And then with that, um, yeah, you have to go out there. No one's coming. I mean, yeah. Every once in a while, totally. someone will come to you. Someone will make a great recommendation. Yeah. But more often, you just have to make opportunities for yourself, yeah. even if there isn't a job opening you're at a place and you want to stay tell them how much you want to stay yeah. write it down even because yeah. if your job has to do with writing show them that you can do your job yeah. uh, while you're asking so that's essentially what I did and yeah. the need was there and in timing aligned for me yeah that's cool so I mean so you were looking for internships and volunteer I mean just to kind of get your nose in the tent as they say like you know to get out there yeah that's yeah cool. absolutely yeah. yeah I think that a lot of people forget like the importance of that, you know what I mean? Like just showing up, it's like so good, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, all right, so then you're at Southern Exposure. Then how did you get to Local Color? How did that all <laughs> come about? What was the, the journey? That was absolute tenacity. Um, <laughs> okay, awesome. There is some like <laughs> major shifts going, and this is like summer of 2019, so maybe I had a dream of a premonition of what was to come, but um, I just saw the opportunity. Uh, Jada goes by Jada. Uh, we went to high school together, oh, okay. um, and there is also, I'm forgetting his name right now, but... Um, another photographer that's been connected to Local Color before I was. Um, so I, I'd known about the organization. I went to the opening in 2016. Um, at the Ross, the old at Ross. The, at Marshall. the old Ross, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was just like, wow, this is so cool yeah. that this exists. Like, I, I remember asking Aaron, like, did you go to grad school? Like, how did you end up here? Yeah. Um, and I just, it kind of just never left my, my mind. And I went through a year, uh, nine mo- month program called uh, Emerging uh, Bay Area Emerging Arts Practitioners, EAP. Yeah. And it's kind of like, like you know, just small group for people working in different places in the field. Again, emerging, we're kind of like new in our career. Who puts that together? What's that? Um, I believe it's funded through Intersection of the Arts. Okay. Um, and it is based in San Francisco. So it is mostly uh, San Francisco based and Oakland based workers okay. that join. Uh, but I yeah. think anyone could technically be a part of it if yeah. you're in the Bay Area. Again, let someone, you know, say no to you. Don't say right. no to yourself. <laughs> right before you even <laughs> ask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Um, so I had applied for that and it was really helpful. Um, Rand and McFadden and, and Catherine Canton were the um, kind of like. Uh, facilitators um, of that program too and we had to do like a presentation Mm -hmm. on like the state of the arts kind of and I chose local color so I was even more so like subscribed to the newsletters following them on Instagram and I saw that they were doing a tour downstairs at the Valley Title building and I typed up a a letter of interest as if I was applying for a grant but to essentially like share (laughs) that I want to work with them what I'm what I was currently doing um, and again, it just kind of aligned. Uh, they were receiving some funding from the Knight Foundation, and we're going to do um, a hiring call. And I kind of just like stepped through nice. at the right time and yeah. um, just introduced myself, handed over this letter, just presented myself in a way that like showed I'm very serious yeah. <laughs> and like already have passion. Um, cool. And from there, I, I've been there for. A little over four years now. Yeah. And you start out kind of part time too, right? Wasn't it part time because of the, I think, I mean, I don't, I thought it was kind of like because of the grant and it was part, and then you went full time or. Yeah, yeah. I most likely. Yeah. Um, I and was, but... just even looking at like my starting wage to now, and you know, I work at a, at a nonprofit, yeah. so it's all public knowledge, but. I think I like started at like 45 a year and yeah. now I'm at like 75 yeah. a year. And yeah. again, that is from being very transparent with yeah. conversations with my team, with yeah. funders. Um, and I'm, I'm very grateful for the experience that I have because all of the, the lure about um, nonprofit organizations, like it has a reputation for a reason. And yeah. I'm very fortunate that uh, Local Color isn't following those bad practices. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. 
That's cool. It's great to hear the story because I kind of thought, it, I mean, it was organic in a way, but it was definitely you helping it happen because I thought it was like more of the kind of story you were just kind of like, you were just like part of the kind of group hanging around and then Aaron and you kind of were talking and then like, oh, here's an opportunity. But it was, you actually pursued this a little bit more. I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know absolutely. that. absolutely. That's cool. That's cool. And that was why Good like I really wanted to work for local color because working in San Francisco and then taking the train, like I'd get home at like yeah. nine o'clock and like yeah. everything's over and um, it was hard to maintain and build off of relationships in a city where I didn't live. Yeah. But then also I'm missing out on all these things that are happening here at home. And so yeah. that was really my my driving force is like I want the opportunity to like get more connected and yeah. and and be present. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so now and so then your role there, your what exactly do you do <laughs> with local color on yeah. a daily basis? <laughs> that super shifted to and like my biggest uh, my first big uh, job with local color was closing down the original location. Oh, yeah. And so I got thrown into it like beautifully because we did like a whole mural blowout so yeah. like pretty much everyone who has ever come through local color got a chance to like come through paint the walls yeah. we had um that's when the backyard uh pop-up was happening in fountain alley um yeah that's right mural arts philadelphia came out so yeah. i got to meet a ton of people yeah. um it's really funny alex mon he would use the term bc of like before carmen <laughs> and, then, oh, okay. and then after for yeah. like uh when i'm like getting uh caught up on things nice. um so i started yeah. out as memberships and facilities you know brew mop i still have yeah, to do I mean, that kind of stuff sure. every once in a while I'll still get those calls um but it had progressed um and the idea of fiscal sponsorship um was already kind of in mm. the the future vision of yeah. what local color was going to be doing um and then in 2020 once you know the pandemic happened that really shifted our operations really shifted the demands of facilities and the studios because we yeah. had to close those. Um, and so I was able to focus on starting to build the program of fiscal sponsorship, which is called the local commons. Um, so that's what I do. I feel like when people ask me, I like to say that I'm in grant land often. Yeah. I like to call it grant land to make yeah. it fun. Um, <laughs> but I do that for both the organization, for local color, um, writing applications, just doing the, the full donor stewardship for that, yeah. as well as now in Parting that knowledge to other independent organizers through yeah. fiscal sponsorship, where um, essentially, if no one's heard that term before, we are um, a 501 c 501c3 specifically, but uh, we are we have an IRS tax designation that says we are a nonprofit, and that has a specific EIN number that allows us to be eligible for grants from the government or foundations, and we're able to share that with independent uh, people or organizations, so they don't have to go out create their own nonprofit, yeah. do all of the regulate regulatory rules for that. Yeah. Um, essentially, it's that um, combining forces, um, sharing knowledge, just yeah. building more closeness in the community as well. Those are kind of the extra things. So that is my cool. full time or was kind of from memberships and facilities to fiscal sponsorship management. Um, and my role as of like the last year has been associate director. So yeah. just have a little bit of everything. We're only a team of six. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, that's new. Too. That's awesome. Six <laughs> is great. That's six a good size. Feels yeah. good right now. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, what would you say then? I mean, you're definitely connected in the local scene and you have a passion for that for a while. Um, how would you describe kind of like, you know, South Bay and then San Jose art scene? What would be some of the characteristics that you would kind of like identify with this area i very passionate and obsessive maybe <laughs> and i'm also using these terms in describing myself um <laughs> when you speak to someone and they're from san jose and i feel like that's every maybe like one in six people it feels like <laughs> in a room they're actually from here yeah. and uh, they're rooted with their family and they're rooted with whatever their passion is too. And like specifically in the arts, like if it's music or if it's um, tattooing or if it's uh, making movies or film or just throwing events, like whatever it is, people go very intensely for it. And yeah. then also it's like a very like DIY, um, not always seeking validation because mm. the South Bay it's like yeah. we've like gotten to a point where it's like, okay, we know that 
it's going to take time to shift our persona if that's even the goal. Right. And so while that's maybe happening on the side, we're, we're doing it for ourselves yeah. um, and doing it for whoever is considered within that community. So yeah. community oriented, yeah. very passionate, yeah. um, tons of different passions. So very diverse and diverse in cultures, yeah. diverse in experiences, um, too diverse and when it comes to economic disparities yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, all yeah. of that complexity lives here yeah yeah that's cool yeah it's interesting you say one in six i was interested on a number of like discussions and boards and stuff that i was on and it was like talking about like the future san jose place making back you know place making and all this kind of stuff with different funders and organizations and then in the room, I was like noticing like me and one other person were actually like raised here. Everybody else had been here only in like last 10 years. And I was kind of like, you guys are making decisions about who we are and you don't even really know. But they, they were very passionate people. So yeah. and they're very connected and own this town now. Um, what would you say in the last. Uh, so in your recent time of working with local color, what has been something that you just really has like inspired you? I am blown away. Like, I genuinely, like, I'm a, a little bit of everywhere, but I really take the time to know a little bit of everyone, too. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I, there's countless people mm -hmm. that I know that have some kind of artistic passion, and they're just, like, really going for it. Like, yeah. I can just, and just being a part of, I think that's what also kind of like launched me in this trajectory is that I started in the realm of like art history. So looking like back yeah. all the way back. <laughs> um, but there's so much history that's being like made right yeah. now, like in the present. Yeah. And although it doesn't always feel that way, like at some point someone's going to be looking back at this and there is so much to look back at. Yeah. And it'd be really interesting to see. Um, if someone was doing like an art history or, or um, trying to create the the canons of, of yeah. time period in Bay Area art, um, what San Jose would be looked at from that like macro yeah. zoom? It would out look like Content Magazine. Is what it would look like. Yes, it would. <laughs> <Quite> honestly, <laughs> little self plug. Yes, the <laughs> archive. It's so important. It's so important. Um, I brought this like assignment that I made in um, college. I was a little late on Content Magazine, <laughs> I have to admit. Uh, but once I found it, I was just like, whoa, <laughs> this is so cool. There's so much going on. Um, and there's so many stories to tell yeah. about it as well. Yeah, that's cool. Um, what would you say then like uh, uh, out of that experience, what kind of like life lesson wisdom do you kind of like try to implement on a daily basis. Do you know what I mean? Like what kind of like drives you and your thought process of waking up in the morning and taking action? I feel like I'm a fairly like realistic person. Like I try to keep both both feet in the micro reality of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, just in my day to day and I really try to like center myself and like I'm safe like I've gotten like to a place of stability yeah. like I'm fortunate to have family and to have love yeah. um, and then also the the macro of just like wow there's so much going on yeah. like in the world in my imagination and the imagination of so many other people yeah. um, so really just trying to like oscillate between yeah. both of those those spaces of yeah. um, and even the things that we do, this is from like Adrian Marie Brown, but like even the things that we do on that micro level create like a little ripple. Yeah. And we may not always know what those ripples are or see the results of our actions, but I do believe that like everything we do can cause ripples. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I would love to see the world change and be um, an equitable place where people don't have to worry about housing or food yeah. security or just their general safety. And then that allows us to like open up to finding joy through whatever you find joy in. Yeah. And that's why I immerse myself in art so much because that is for me that, that source of, of happiness. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I love uh, one writer, I can't remember, it was this like this idea of 51%, right? Like if we, any situation, just just if you just added 1% more value than what you took away, 
the world would be a better place. Like that would change so much. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I mean, it's like small little effort. I mean, that's kind of the bare minimum, right? Yeah. You know, but um, yeah. Um, so now you, you started a podcast a little while ago. I did. Plan and Story. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so um, there was some interest. In, this is kind of th- seems to be a theme that's running through your life because it was talked about you kind of wanted the mission of it is to kind of like uh, inspire people to, and to bring like joy and community. So talk about those two kind of like themes that seem to like run through your life. I don't even know how to put a question on it, but just like joy community talk. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't even know how to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, well, my parents are, are both from, well, my dad's from Oklahoma City. My mom's from Richmond, Virginia originally. And so it was mostly just my immediate family here in San Jose. And I have okay. God family in Oakland. Okay. Um, but so, so they pretty were small. Pretty small. Those circle. are the people that were like closest yeah. to me. And we, we do talk about like this, our circles of friendships. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like working on my Cheerio right now. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. maybe we'll get to like a Krispy Kreme donut one day. <laughs> right. um, and then we'll have the whole box. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, I think that kind of like intimate knowing of people has like stuck with me very Mm. much so through childhood till now. Um, And and then again, just like the witness of the you know exact opposites of Mm. joy. And Mm. I am way too in tune with my emotions now, and I'd rather not cry on this podcast. (laughs) So I think (laughs) if you cry, I'll cry. I'll cry without a crier. So I have become a crier. Um, and maybe this is also like because I'm a Leo or if, you know, if you want to get into numerology, <laughs> my life path number is the number five. So apparently I am just bound for adventure. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just I know too much of the opposite. And, yeah. um, you know, the past three years, like absolutely terrific. Um, and I was still commuting when Nina Wilson, um, was, her life was taken, mm. uh, so rest in power. Um, and yeah. But yeah, just that balance yeah. of uh, I know what I can control and yeah. what I can control is what I can do with my time, um, how I generate my resources, because yeah. you know, I haven't taken down capitalism just yet. <laughs> um, but if someone's out here and wants to start a farm, um, that's also been a, a dream of mine, which yeah. is again that like learning, I can't remember when I learned about communes and things mm. like not the yeah. col- not the scary yeah. culty kind, sure. yeah. um, but Waco, the, Texas kind. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the the self sustaining, yeah. um, going back towards indigenous practices and yeah. just imagining, you know, indigenous peoples. They were they were likely you know just caring for, for their bodies, caring yeah. for their families, caring for their tribes, and caring for the environment. Yeah. Um, that's what I take away from from those cultures, and really wanting to replicate that in the face of you know, the exact opposite, especially in the last, um, you know, three, four years and yeah. everything that we're, we're dealing with on a, on a political scale um, in, uh, in school, you know, taking an um, African-American studies class, uh, like learned about the intersections of, of black Indians, which is similar mm. to my own diaspora of mm. like West, Af- West African heritage and um, Freedman Cherokee and uh, the Chickahominy of Virginia. And just that opportunity to like live life joyfully was yeah. not always prevalent. And I think that's what we have yeah. most in yeah. these days. There's people that are actively working against that. So yeah. we also just as strongly, just as fiercely <laughs> need to be finding ways to create safe spaces, um, to remind people that joy is out there because sometimes you just can't see it because yeah. you're bogged down by everything else. And like loneliness is real um, yeah. as well. Um, this past year has just been like a really big shift for me um, for the positive. And I felt like like through that fear, I had definitely like kind of lost my voice. Mm, um, okay. And so I was like, you know, listening to like throat chakra music <laughs> and like just trying to like yeah. get centered. Yeah. Um, and starting that podcast was also a way of me to like just even if you're by yourself in a room, yeah. like you don't just sit here and be quiet and under a blanket, like <laughs> at least like talk. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. 
uh, yeah, just for my own my own health. Um, yeah. And Haley uh, Haley Cardamom of San Jose Day yeah. was my first guest <laughs> yeah, on there cool. as well. Yeah, I just said that. Um, and so that was the last episode that I put out. Um, and I'll get back to it. I moved again, and that was. A sure. weird and scary time. I've moved three times in the last year. Oh, that's fun. Um, have you got new thing where you have your possessions so they just like fit in one suitcase or almost? <laughs> yeah, the, like the tote bags that I own, yeah, yeah, and then a couple yeah. uh, plastic bins. Yeah, <laughs> um, I've, yeah. I've condensed down um, yeah. that farm, and then maybe an airstream on the farm. So like oh. slowly condensing down for like that kind of livelihood. Yeah, which is very hard when you love art. Um, so yeah, right. You collect. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it is, you know, I mean, I get what you're saying. It's, too, it's just the the strangest thing about life is like the, the, even the good attentions. Like you think about like, you know, like capitalism and the American industrial period, you know, and all that kind of stuff, right? Even technology, all these things with the intention to make life better, mm-hmm. right? And yet then there's these side effects that are actually destroying like the simple life, you know what I mean? But it's mm-hmm. great that. I mean, like, if I had to go out and plant all the food that I was going to eat and I had to raise my cattle and all that kind of stuff, like, I would starve probably in a week, yes. you know? So it is good that we have these other kind of things. But, yeah, just the negative side of what that, the mass production of what that does. and Absolutely. You know, so and ideally, it wouldn't just be us, like, that one person yeah. managing their yeah. own plot of land. Totally. That um, That was also, like, a really interesting parallel that I remember from art history that it went from like there was never an artist's name on the artwork it would be accredited to whatever school of painting it was and then yeah Yeah. and then at some point it did shift to that like individual the um and so this was my painting so it wouldn't be you know it would be the region's plot of land and it would be the region's responsibility to keep everyone fed so that the the individuals within the collective can can thrive and yeah. i feel like that also goes back to like the, the 12 points program of like the, like the black panthers and like what mutual aid and that's yeah. something that i've been really inspired by as well like i, I realize that i do work um you know, at a 501c3 but i also understand and recognize that there's like so many different models for for succeeding and for taking care yeah. of communities um and yeah we can all just kind of learn from each other yeah how does art then do you think help move the needle forward for this kind of community that you're talking about i think art i mean i would consider like a podcast and art and so you're just here looking to hear a conversation um and from this conversation you you, you'll take a nugget from it and that can grow into a seed and those ripples and so with art you know some of it is just like purely for joy and to like tickle the senses and some art has that you know either very direct or subliminal meaning to it um and i think that's also so what drives me to like work in the arts so that I can engage with the art, but also engage with the artist uh, right. because sometimes you don't always carry the message right away or like how someone wanted it to be absorbed yeah. um, until you can actually have a conversation with them and have them explain it to you. And then, you know, now I'm, I'm going and researching something that's going to like take me further down yeah. that path and that is possible within politics that's possible within environmental stewardship within um recognitions of other cultures yeah. so yeah i think that art is totally critical um and if you you know are able to to have the ability to see and to like really just take something in just like color theory even yeah. those yeah. kinds of like yeah. subliminal yeah. things of like the collection tapping into the collective consciousness uh, which sometimes is like accidental or totally. sometimes it's intentional by looking at patterns um, and getting into that commercial realm. So, yeah, yeah I, I think that art is kind of all powerful. I yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, definitely because it's it is expression and communication. Right. And so there is there is value, like you're saying, like just in recognizing, admiring and having awe for beauty. Mm-hmm. Right. That's like uh, and aesthetics. But then there's also the thing of like having a, a message of change or a thought. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so then let's talk a little bit more about the podcast, the name, the plan, and story. Like, what's like um, because we sometimes we have was it some, we have our plans, but then the, the story's unfolding. Kind of yes. tell me like, what's the. Absolutely. I mean, you pretty much, yeah, nail, nail <laughs> Sorry. on the head. Sorry, this was be a question. No, I, that's okay. Yeah. That's good, right? I, I do, I didn't want that to be hard to understand. <laughs> I wanted that to be relatable, yeah. so good. Um, <laughs> I, um, being, probably because we're in California, uh, read a lot of Steinbeck, and so nice. Of Mice and Men was definitely yeah. something that was in our, you know, our English class, and yeah. that story really stuck for me. They, you know, they were just trying to do their best, and then they <laughs> got caught up in this farm and yeah. all the things that happened there, yeah. uh, but they had a plan, and so um, the best laid plans of mm. Mice and Men often go awry. Right. Um, I believe that that mm. is... Right. Part of the quote, not exactly the quote, yeah. but how it's like most commonly remembered. Sure. Um, and again, after this period of high school where I was like, I know what I'm doing. And then right. all of a sudden, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I got it tattooed on my shoulder. So it's even just a little oh, awesome. uh, reminder yeah. with like a little hanger next to it to also just like. Yeah like let go like yeah. let go of the fact that that plan didn't yeah. work so that you can carry on forward yeah. um so having that reminder to myself and i think that just became another really important reminder that i needed and just need to keep reminding myself of um goes back to grant land as well <laughs> like i can be sitting there typing the best application that i believe i can type and then you just have to send it off and yeah. hope that someone can receive it yeah. um so that you can carry out and you know, with anything like I, yeah. I, I'm regaining um, my future vision. Uh, so re trying to find those stepping stones again to like work towards and to kind of get a better idea of what my mm. like future des destination is. Yeah. Um, very happy that the present is so wonderful and I can just immerse myself and just yeah. be present right now and, and feel happy and content there. But I am someone that likes to make plans. Yeah. Um, I, I do have a, a bit of a structured brain, um, but then also can be like very like loosey goosey and like flailing through life. Yeah. <laughs> so. Are you? I mean, you're pretty much like you have a to do list, and are you? You know, and you like check them off every day. Or are you like got to have your email empty every Ooh, night when yes. you go to bed? Like okay. that kind of stuff. Like, Inbox, definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need to know so I can just leave it uh. to bed. Um, <laughs> but checklists, so-so, yeah. doing better. This was my first year of, like, actually implementing a planner. Oh, um, wow. Also, because of the, the podcast, too, it was just, like – because I love what's going on so much, mm. there's there's so much that I actually get to go to. Yeah. And there's also so much that, you know, it's the joy of missing out. Like, I, right. I knew about it, but, like, I, there's not yeah. more than one of me. So. I like that there's the joy <laughs> of missing out because yeah. I totally have, like, the FOMO, right? The fear. Yeah. Anyways, could, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it's just great to know that something is going on. Like, it's great yeah. to know that there is endless opportunity. If you want to get out there, there's yeah. probably something happening in your neighborhood. Hopefully it's happening when you're off of work. But, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. there's morning days and nights, yeah. weekdays, weekends. Yeah. There's, like, almost always something going on. Um, and so kind of as a way to – encourage the people that are currently organizing events and the future yeah. people to like be inspired and to like take up the the baton when that time yeah. comes to continue being organizers in a sense of like curating events and, and gallery yeah. shows concerts um yeah i do appreciate that about the podcast just the new comedy non exhibitions or events that you went to do you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. kind of fun to kind of like see that, I really appreciate. It. I mean, we need that here too, so people can see and be inspired. Like, oh, this went. You know, I missed out on that. I want to go check it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you mentioned like your your future vision, and you are a planner, but you also you're finding that strange tension of life where it's having plans, moving forward, and yet being able to adapt with what comes your way. But what would you say at this current point if you were to have to like put a little nugget on what your vision for yourself is? What is that? Um, if you're willing to share. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's like pretty much in my LinkedIn bio. It, the idea yeah. of having mm. a plot of land um, that is self-sustained, that is a place for myself and my family, but also a place that people who need it would be able to go. Yeah. And um, I don't, 
again, I, I always just go back to this, uh, even in other conversations, so not just for this podcast, <laughs> but um, just like, er, capitalism, er, <laughs> like, <laughs> why is there a numerical value on my life <laughs> when right. the dollar equates to who knows what the dollar right. even yeah, equates there is to no these days? For it, not really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I think having those reprieves from that will allow us to keep going while the world is the way the world is. Um, So definitely the vision is sustainable, shareable community. Would you say if I... Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully there'd be tons of artistic people there. So it would be... Yeah, it's kind of dreamy. A little farm, a little cabin, a little... (laughs) Who knows? Um, And being from the Bay Area, like, it's such a... We live in such a beautiful place. Like, I think that would... Could that happen in San Jose? I don't know. That would be amazing. My parents are still here, so I really have no desire to to leave (laughs) San Jose, my community, my family. Um, But I do love the hills of Marin um, and, you know, Hmm. all of that water you can capture from the fog and everything. So that (laughs) that lends into the plans. Yeah, you do have to think about the full sustainability. That's the tough thing about this area is, like, you know, they used to say, like, you could catch enough you know, run off water from your own roof to sustain yourself. But I don't know. It's San Jose. I don't know if you could do that, you know. We're getting more weather now, which is good. (laughs) A little bit more of the four seasons. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. Yeah, the (laughs) three, the two seasons. Yeah. Um, Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to see the the future farm that you're going to set up. I mean, you're... You're farming and planting seeds. It seems like that's you have that kind of mentality. Like you're seeing that. Like uh, we even talked about changing the community, right? And you even mentioned, you know, like seeds. So I think that's, uh, yeah, it's kind of like that's in your kind of thing, like to plant seeds and have them grow and nurture them. So and what you're doing with, you know, local color, you're helping artists do that. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Um, what's uh, like for you, what is currently like, in your what music are you listening to that's like Ooh. that's like you're jamming to that's giving you inspiration and stuff um well i've had some really wonderful live musical experiences oh, so yeah. just got to see madison mcfearon oh, I'm not sure. um I, I hope i'm saying your name properly <laughs> um just played at the levitt pavilion with oh, okay. uh, the local joy Dunn hackett so nice. immediately put them in my recently added um, I got to see Mac Sabbath okay. at the Great American Music Hall, and oh. they are a very theatrical Black Sabbath cover band, so oh. a little old school rock and roll. Yeah. Um, I feel like if I'm just hitting play on something, it might be the Gorillas or Leon Bridges, um, little jazzy funk yeah. kind of rock electronic a little bit of everything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. eclectic i love mm-hmm. that yeah yeah That's i still cool. have access to my old like itunes account and so i do love to just like play shuffle and yeah. like hear music that i was listening to when i was like much younger and all the music and bands that i've like found recently too yeah yeah <laughs> that's cool so uh, not to have to move it to the capitalism but let's promote a local color activity that's coming up <laughs> absolutely <laughs> the yeah 31 skull yeah talk about that right, let's do two things where did that come from and then what can we expect this 27th of october in 2023 at the mexican heritage plaza aaron salazar is local colors founder and executive director and you know before any of that was an artist and so during the shutdowns of 2020, we're all in isolation. She ends up ordering these ceramic skulls and starts painting them for herself and then has an aha moment of like, this could be a fundraiser and should be a fundraiser because we're in this like very precarious time. Yeah. Um, and that led us to 31 skulls. It started as kind of like a very fun QVC style. We like dressed up <laughs> in Halloween costumes and just did a raffle. Um, and now it's like evolved year after year. These ceramic skulls are pretty durable. So artists yeah. are doing more adventurous yeah. sculpting, um, adding ceramics to it, adding bases to it, so levitating one that like them. There's like a tree grow- <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chetna is so awesome. 
Um, and it's also, so it's around De Los, De Los Muertos and um, the All Hallows Eve Halloween season. So definitely a little bit of honoring, um, you know, the kind of the macabre and, and sadness of that moment yeah. and anyone who has left, but also taking a moment to celebrate all the people that are here, yeah. all the people that local color has gotten to work with. So we'll, um, we look back at uh, people that we have recently worked with in the current year um, or since the last 31 schools, um, as well as artists who are in our artist resident studios yeah. um, and send uh, kind of a big invite to those folks uh, to sign up to to do the schools. And we always kind of aim for around 31. So like give or take, uh, there's <laughs> a little bit more, but always at least 31 schools um, to just mark the day. And this year, it's going to be at the San Jose Women's Club, which oh, is really right, exciting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we saw yeah. the space, and yeah, space. It, last year it turned into um, a goth formal. Like, so that's the attire. So if you're coming, I hope you'll like show up in your your best goth formal digs, however you want to interpret <laughs> that. Um, and so it's really come a really fun party. So this has like capacity for 300 people. So I hope we can fill it out with all yeah. the artists who have painted and people who come through. Um, Are you guys gonna have like live music on the stage for the goth formal part of it? I mean, is it like a dance type thing too? Or? Uh, we'll have some DJing okay. during yeah. the main event uh, for anyone that wants to come to the VIP hour. You get the first opportunity to start placing your bids on the skulls and we will have a live musical performance in the first hour. Um, and then it's kind of chilling, enjoying. Um, we're lucky to have Miguel Azuna come back. So if you look back at the recap, you'll see all these really cool uh, ghost portraits uh, just using time and light yeah, nice. <laughs> um, to play yeah. and create these kind of spirit, spirity looking portraits. So he'll be back again. Um, so it'll be a nice time to just enjoy talking with everyone. Yeah. And then for the final hour, it'll be a live auction. Um, so we are every year it's different this is our fourth year um and it really started out of a place of fun and joy and that's really where the organization yeah. started from too but at the same time that i can balance both perspectives i feel like local color really aligns with my values because at the center of our mission is um to create equitable pathways for artists to thrive. Um, and one of the main ways that we do that, and it's important for us to do that, is through economic opportunities, yeah. because that is the world that we live in. Yeah. So um, to make sure that there is a way for artists to sustain themselves, both through the physical dollar um, exchanging hands between us and through between small businesses and funders and large yeah. corporations more essentially um, to be able to invest in that support. Um, but also just through community and just having yeah. a, a fun time. And, you know, you could meet your, your next patron through that. Uh, my mom has been calling me. She got really lucky. <laughs> the second year that we did it, we were still doing a raffle. So we did two years of a raffle. Last year was the first time we did an auction format. And this is going to be the second year it's doing an auction format. Um, so in the in the raffle, my mom won a Patrick Hoffmeister oh, school. Cool. And yeah. he did these incredible like intricate Dremel, um, like his filigree kind yeah. of style yeah. into it. You could like put a candle in there, it's awesome. Um, and my mom is wonderful and she had promised it to a coworker that she invited with her. And so she, you know, was it, stayed true to her word yeah, and gave did, gave yeah. them that skull. And yeah. I was like, that's probably like <laughs> the retail value on that one. Yeah. Um, and then last year uh, she, in the auction won the bid for uh reos mago skull oh, awesome. so she's already like calling me and like asking about her favorites right, and, like right. are they what like when is there is going to be posted yeah so we're doing a, a cool like little slow rollout uh alex nobody yeah, uh took all the too. portraits so this year uh so we're rolling out so people can get the kind of close-up look um so enjoy it as a digital art show enjoy yeah. it in person uh, also, please join us on October 27th at the San Jose Women's Club. Um, Is that if you'd like 10th to. or 11th or 12th or something? Uh, like between it? 10th and 11th. So nice, easy parking yeah. at the San Jose State, State Parking Garage. Yeah. Only $8 flat rate. So $8 great, parking ticket, a, great a little walk. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool. Okay, and then so how do they get a hold of Local Color? Why don't you tell us the deets for local color and then plan and story as well sure um so for local color please visit our website uh it's plant oh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> mixed it up <laughs> local colors website is local color 
sj.org. Um, same thing on Instagram, local color sj. Um, and to find myself, um, you could feel free to find the Plan and Story podcast on iTunes, on Spotify, and on Instagram, all at Plan and Story. Awesome. Cool. Last thing. Uh, what would be one thing you would want to tell people? Like this, like this is your platform to millions of people. <laughs> um, actually, the audience is right here. Um, <laughs> and uh, what would be if you wanted to like leave a little something? What would you want to say? What would it be? Like Carmen's message. Ooh. Simply to hold on to your joy and protect it and to go after it in whatever way that means for you. Um, Your life is precious. Everyone's life is precious. And um, let's just do our best to make it a little bit better. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And on that, good night. (laughs) Or good day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Content Magazine Podcast. Follow us on social media at Content Mag. Become a member and help us to continue to tell the stories of the South Bay creatives. This episode's music is 408 by Jack Pavlina. Follow him on Spotify and also on his Instagram at Jack Pavlina Music. <laughs>